in this video. I want to tell something about resistance and impedance. So, uh, I hope my camera will work. Perhaps it will take a quite long time anyway. No problem. Uh, electronic resistance and when we are talking purely about DC resistance without any say AC influences or capacitive or inductive influences we are we are uh, talking about Ohm's law and this is what Ohm's law tells us the voltage is the current uh, multiplied by the resistance and uh, in fact here is the same. So that means that when we are working with pure resistors like this, uh, of course pure does not mean that these uh, resistors have a certain purity but the, it all has to do with the fact that the resistance in the electronic circuit is purely ohms. So there are no inductive or capacitive effects. And when you for instance make a circuit with a few resistors measure current inside such a circuit. For instance measure the current say here, here is DC 12 volt here we have a voltmeter and this is the plus of the voltmeter this is the minus here's the plus and here's the minus uh, a certain current will start to flow and there is no effect whatever from say uh, capacitors or inductors so that's this circuit. Now in the middle of the screen. And you can use Ohm's law. No problem. The AC resistance is a completely other issue. Uh, uh, when we apply an AC voltage to a coil or to a um, capacitor. Uh, the resistance of the coil here or of that capacitor here is frequency dependent and that's very very important I want to show that in a better way here are the formulas that means that when we change the frequency and send that frequency into a coil, the coil will have a different resistance, a different AC resistance. And when we send a frequency into a capacitor, it will also have a different resistance, say in terms of ohms. Of course there are better uh, ways to calculate that, make that visible, but this is the basic circuit that uh, everyone has to understand that works with um, coils, capacitors in electronic circuits. And that means, for instance, uh, that a coil of 10 Henry at 50 Hz has a AC resistance of 3040 sorry 3040 ohms and a capacitor connected to a signal generator say a capacitor of 0 0.47 microfarad at 50 hertz has a resistance of 6775 ohms of course there are tolerances in such a circuit that's of course clear and uh, 
as far as I know, I don't know that exactly, but as far as I know, this uh, refers to a sine wave. So a sine wave generator, not a square wave generator. Perhaps I'm wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, but anyway. Coil resistance depends on the frequency and also the capacitor resistance depends on the frequency. And when we are talking about impedance, that's a completely other issue. The impedance is a com complex resistance. It consists of, say, uh, ohms elements here. It consists of um, capacitive elements and also of um, coil elements, so inductive elements. That makes uh, the calculation of an impedance quite complex. But anyway, I want to give some ideas and they are here. This of course refers to the earlier video. I show here on the left side a resistance of 100 ohms and then a resistor of 12,000 ohms and then a coil. But when we are talking about coils we are going in the direction of complex resistance because the resistance depends on the frequency. And also here that capacitor, the resistance of that capacitor depends on the frequency and that also means that we can use a coil or a capacitor to distinct a certain frequency band. That has everything to do with the relative resistance and then related to the frequency, of course. So here you see um, an application. For instance here a um, capacitor of say 27 nanofarad connected to this circuit with a certain input and a certain output and such a capacitor in series with the line lead and the line lead um, is responsible or transport all the frequencies between say 0 Hz and 20 kHz and when you mount such a capacitor in that line lead uh, it will uh, act as a low loss filter. So the high frequencies can pass due to the frequency effect of the capacitor and the low frequencies are not able to pass. So this is the very easy, a very easy um, frequency filter. The most easy filter that you can make. And you can really make it when you for instance have a CD player or whatever. Uh, hook up that capacitor into the signal line and then send it into an audio amplifier and you will surely hear a lot of loss of the low frequencies. And here we have in a certain way the contrary. Uh, now we shortcut all the high frequencies to ground. Has also everything to do with the impedance of the circuit and the frequency dependent um, uh, property of that capacitor. But of course this is in a certain way also a theoretical circuit because we don't know the input impedance, don't know the output impedance. For instance when at the output impedance we also have a kind of capacitor that bridges the 22 nanofarad capacitor or we have an impedance that bridges that 22 or 27 nanofarad capacitor that will have a sure effect on how all the frequencies of the audio band are coming true. 
finally into the loudspeaker via the end amplifier. And here we have exactly the same circ uh, circuit. We don't know the input impedance of this capacitor, don't know the output impedance of that capacitor. But don't worry, in general, when you do experiments with audio circuits, the input and the output impedance are in the, say, 5 kilo, uh, kilo cycles up to 10, sorry, kilo cycles, kilo ohms, 5 kilo ohms up to 10 kilo ohms range. And that means that such a capacitor and also such a capacitor have a very good effect. You will surely hear the effects of such a capacitor. The coil again. Everything about this coil is, say, frequency dependent. You can use a ferrite core that makes the inductance much higher and thus the frequency effects also much higher. In general, a higher inductance, so for instance a ferrite core, brings the frequency of such a coil down. And removing that ferrite core brings the frequency up. And taking out windings out of such a coil also brings the frequency up. That was more or less all to tell. So, uh, I've talked already about this in a certain way. On the left side we see the generator and that can be everything. Could be say an audio amplifier, sorry, an uh, mp3 player or a CD player. And then we have here that coupling capacitor here. That's frequency dependent and for many audio circuits you can use a 470 nanofarad non-polar capacitor and that capacitor is in general uh, usable to transport all the audio frequencies from say 20 Hz up to uh, 20 kHz into that second stage. But to uh, confuse the whole circuit somewhat you can also look here, for instance, at the high frequency generator. That works on, say, 15 megahertz. In that case, you need a much smaller uh, coupling capacitor. It could be in the 50 picofarad up to 100 picofarad range, and that's enough. The value is high enough to transport all the frequencies out of the high frequency generator into that second stage. Of course you have to do experiments. That's always important when we are talking about electronics. Only the experiment shows, gives us the right information. Uh, so here for instance an oscillator and here a buffer stage coupling capacitor in the, say, uh, 20 picofarad up to 100 picofarad range. And of course I give, can give much more examples, but anyway. Here the whole circuit in its, uh, say, theoretic uh, ID. Every wire has an inductance between wires of the signal lead and ground there is a capacitance. The ground lead also has capacitance. Uh, this resistor could be ohms, but between that resistor and a second stage there could be uh, a, a coil effect. So inductive effect. And here again a capacitor and here that final stage. So uh, these are more or less all the theoretic problems that you can face and also calculate when you study electronics. I don't, um, I did not study electronics. My uh, knowledge is pure practical. But anyway, uh, 
this could be a good uh, say model to see what happens in a certain circuit. We have the source. That source has a certain output impedance here. We have the second stage that has an input impedance. And um, well, things to take in account. But of course, when you do uh, say uh, audio circuits, only work on audio circuits, the whole circuit plays a role, but is not uh, does not play a very big role. So in general, for audio circuits between say 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz. Uh, the inductive uh, uh, property of the wiring does not play a role, but of course it can start to play a role. When you, for instance, have two wires close together and one of the wires uh, uh, transports a big current and in that case in the other, in the other wire a certain, a say, stray current can be induced. And especially when that wire uh, transports AC, such a, another wire can be more vulnerable to AC influences. Anyway, um, there are a lot of tricks to uh, say um, adapt an impedance say this is an output amplifier of 20 watts and the amplifier starts to oscillate uh, for say a strange reason uh, due to the impedance effect at the input for instance mount here a resistor of 10k or 1k as a series resistance to the first amplifier, to the audio amplifier. Another uh, problem could be the circuit, the, an audio amplifier starts to oscillate and it could be that the input of such an audio amplifier is far too high impedant and so far too sensitive. So in that case you can uh, make that audio amplifier less sensitive by connecting here a capacitor of 470 picofarad. It makes that the audio and amplifier um, gets a limited frequency band. All frequencies above say uh, 20 kilohertz or say 25 kilohertz are damped out by that simple capacitor. A small trick and uh, well perhaps there are more more tricks to tell um, this of course all stays the same 